up guys, I'm Andrew from Finding Wombat Productions and this is ATG number 38. For the week of July 5th, 2013, and once again, I'm all alone. So, let's just get over with it and do some game news and some reviews and news and stuffs. Um, <clears throat> no retail release this week, but Scourge Outbreak is out for the arcade. The Xbox Live Arcade. For DLC, uh, Black Ops 2 Vengeance came out. Telltale's The Walking Dead 400 Days came out this Tuesday for PSN and came out today for Xbox Live Arcade and PC. On Minecraft PC version, um, an update has been released and horses have been added to the game. SimCity has an airsh airship DLC that I'm pretty sure Jelani is excited for. And the General Zod DLC for Injustice if it's available for the 360, the PS3, and the Wii U. And that's it for games. Um, so, here's some news. Big piece of news from Microsoft. Microsoft's interactive entertainment business president, or basically the head of Xbox, Don Matrick, has left Microsoft to be the CEO of Zanga. It's very depressing. I like watching him present stuff. More news from the Xbox. The Xbox One will be able to read QR codes through the Kinect to save players trouble. Save players the trouble of typing. Yeah, it's making it easy to be lazy. Also, the Xbox One will be introducing a reputation system to Xbox Live. The prime example for this is if you are a troll and people report you as it or give you that reputation, you'll be paired with other trolls. Um, Rockstar has announced that GTA 5 will require installations on the consoles. On the Xbox 360 version of the game, the game will come with two discs. The first is to install the game, and the second is to play it. Um, that's it for news, and I'm now time for the review of Deadpool that Jelani wrote. I wish he was here to read it, but unfortunately he has work. So, Deadpool as a character is a sar sarcastic, over-the-top crude, offensive, in your face, in your space, and fucking insane, and the developers, High Moon Studios, do a good job of translating that into the game. This game breaks the fourth wall with a sledgehammer and shows enough shame for doing it. If you, are a fam if you have a family-friendly sense of humor, you shouldn't even bother picking it up, because even the menu being on idle will offend you. You play the game, obviously, as Deadpool, and his two supporting characters, <coughs> the voices in his head. So yes, the voice actors are Deadpool, Deadpool, and Deadpool. The mutant Merc is on a mission to play his game and make it awesome. The writing is nonsensically, nonsensical and humorous, but not every joke is going to last successfully, if at all. When it comes to controls, they run pretty smooth at times, but with a delay, you'll accidentally... <clears throat> With the delay, you accidentally move into some combos that might cost you life. Camera issues and other weird glitches and bugged areas scoured, sort of, blah, 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 blah. soured the game experience. The game is fun, but not but is relatively short and warrants maybe two playthroughs if you want 100 percent it. But after, oh man, long ass review. But after that, it doesn't hold much water. Challenge maps exist as sort of a second life, but they're essentially the levels from the campaign you already played. Jelani deems Deadpool is a risk hit. I haven't played it, so I can't confirm or deny, but it's probably going to be a risk hit from this review that I had trouble reading for some reason. Anyways, that's it for this week's ATG. Uh, join us next week. Hope we will have a Let's Play out this week if our files finally start working right. Had some issues with that. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.